So this is my proof of concept for a DIY canister filter. Um, the canister is basically a what is that mainstays canister from Walmart. The reason I chose this particular uh, canister um, is because it has a screw on lid and it has a small form factor. The screw on lid became apparent to me last week when I tried this originally with this container. Um, I like this container because you have these little flaps or latches and the top just comes on comes on and off fairly easily. The problem with it is it, it's not watertight. The lid the, and the label, excuse me, says watertight, but it really truly isn't. I guess in fairness, if you put water in here and you kind of just tilt it to the side and do like this, it does not leak. But if you exude any kind of pressure on it, it fails spectacularly. I mean, I had water leaking out of everywhere around here. I mean, regardless of what I did, I, it just would not work at all. So this really did not work for me whatsoever. So I went with um, this one again because of the um, screw on lid and also the form factor. This small form factor, this uh, canister is gonna be used on a turtle tank in my son's room. It's actually for my son's tank. Um, so I would like something that's small that I can tuck out of the way so he won't tamper with it or his little brothers and knock it over. Um, so I do kind of like this. Um, the design really comes from DIY Aqua Pros. Um, it's just my, my version of it, but the, the concept is from, from them. Um, I drilled a half, excuse me, a three quarter inch hole in the top of the, the lid and I drilled a, another hole in the bottom. So this is the intake and this is the outtake, the output. Um, you can disregard this. The original design or my original um, try of this, I wanted to suck water out of the tank and have a tube on here that pushes the water all the way down to the bottom of the container and then it gets filtered on the way up through the biological and chem and biological and mechanical media and then suck it out of the top. The problem with doing that with a screw on lid is when you put the tube in here and you start to close it, when the media is in there, you can't get the tube to be positioned properly. So I tried that for about 10 minutes and kind of just gave up on that and just went back to having water come in the top and going out the bottom. I guess now that I think about it, in hindsight, I guess I could still pump water through the bottom, have it still filtered up through the media and ultimately um, return to the tank out the top. But I guess we'll have to see how that works. For now, I'm gonna, just going to go with what I have where I'm pumping water in the top and sucking out at the bottom. Um, what I have here is a half inch hose connector. Um, nothing special, found it at Lowe's. Um, I have two of those in here, uh, all connected to the actual canister. Inside there, it's kind of hard to see because of the water, I have a half inch PVC connector it's threaded on one side, and basically I'm using that as my nut. I could not find a plastic or nylon nut at Lowe's, so I'm just using that connector. Um, it's threaded, like I said, on one side, and the other side is just open, it's a slip. So the water still passes through there um, just fine. Inside the lid, I have this 90 degree elbow. I don't know if this is gonna make the, the final design, because it may not be necessary, but um, as I was, as water is rushing through the tube um, and down into the into the canister, it's creating bubbles. And so what was happening? Bubbles were being pumped through the through the system. Um, once I have media in here, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But if it is, at least I do have a viable solution by using that ninety um, degree degree elbow. Um, so that's just a little tip. Um, the, the, I have a ball valve here, a half inch ball valve, um, that's connected to the pump, the power head, um, using this flex riser. And the reason I have this is because in the, the design I'm probably going to end up going with, I'm not going to have this little tube here. I'm going to have this ball valve connected directly to the canister using a riser. I'm probably going to eliminate this out of the tube, um, out of, out of the system. One less um, you know, point of failure. Um, 
So as the water is pumped into the tank, a pump, you know, out of the canister into the tank, it goes up this little tube here and into my DIY output. Um, I did have a DIY intake as well. And both of these I found on um, DIY Aqua Pros. I will put a link in the description so you can see how that was actually was actually made. Um, so that's it really for the construction. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna tighten the lid and I'm gonna turn it on and so you can see how it all works. So now that the lid is on nice and tight, we can start uh, pumping water through the system. One thing to note is that I did fill up the canister with water um, beforehand. The thought is if, these water, if there's water in the canister and the uh, lid is on tight, I don't have to manually create a filter, risk getting crappy turtle poop water in my mouth. Um, it should create a vacuum as water is being pumped, out, is being sucked out of it, water should get sucked into the canister. So I'm going to attempt to do this by one hand. I'm going to turn on the filter, uh, excuse me, turn on the pump and um, open the ball valve. <sighs> Pumps on. Ball valve is open, and there it goes. The water starts to be sucked out of the um, out of the, the tank into the filter. In, excuse me, into the canister. So water is going in. It's being pumped through all of this. I have about 16 foot of tubing. <laughs> Because nothing was sized right, eight on the, in either side, eight on the input and eight on the output. But there she goes. Water is flowing in. Water is being sucked out. Going through the system. Going pretty nicely. I have a few air bubbles. But for the most part, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. And there you go. No bubbles actually being pumped through the system. But there it is. Pretty good water flow. I do have a slight leak at the bottom here. Um, it's probably hard to see on camera, but there the water is leaking. Uh, a little down there and I think what the problem may be is that I secured the um, the half inch uh, hose connector a little too tight so the lip of it and if you may be able to see it under here um, let me focus it a little bit yeah there's a lip here on the hose connector the lip down here is actually in maybe a little too much so it may be inside the container a little bit and causing a leak, but I'm gonna figure out what's up with that and um, take care of it. But as you can see, it's been running now for a few minutes and all of the air bubbles that were in the input have been pushed out. So it's running pretty smoothly, um, pretty cleanly. Still have really good um, water flow. What I don't like though, however, and again, this is in my son's room, is that how loud this is. So I actually have this PVC, little PVC extender. I'm gonna connect it onto here, and I'm gonna have it have this part, the output, under the water, or at least uh, closer to the top of the water, so it's not really making all this noise. Because I know he's gonna be complaining, Daddy, I can't sleep, it's too loud. So, yeah. So there it is. Um, I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and um, drop me a line or pop a comment below.